And welcome everyone to a Fox Sports chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by St. John's head coach, Mike Anderson. And Mike, uh, you know, you've been kind of in a really unique situation. You were the head coach at Arkansas. You moved to New York and St. John's, have a really solid season, which we'll talk about here in a moment, uh, play a half of basketball uh, before everything gets shut down. And now you're in the epicenter of where everything's going on. So what's life been like during the shutdown over the last five weeks? Oh, it, it has been surreal. And uh, you can see I've got my little sequestered uh, little beard going here. Uh, can't get to the barber. I don't know for what. But uh, it, it's been, uh, it's, I mean, it's kind of like you, 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 you're caged in. Uh, get a chance to go out to the grocery store to do the essential things. But uh, first and foremost, let me, let me say this here. I've learned so much about, uh, you know, New York and what it's all about. Uh, when you talk about the, the first responders, the, I mean, the, in terms of what they're doing, uh, Governor Cuomo, in terms of how he's leading uh, uh, this this state, I mean, in this epic, while the pandemic is going on, uh, I can't say it enough. And I didn't know it, but everything is surfaced right around New York. When you talk about the news, I'm looking at it, it's coming from New York. So, uh but with that being said, it's, 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 it's unfortunate. Uh, it's uh, uh, something that we're going through that is probably no one can ever imagine. And, uh, and I, just, I just, my prayers and thoughts goes out to all the families who's lost uh, loved ones during this particular time. But uh, it, it's, been, uh, it's been surreal. So what's it been like within the St. John's community, whether, I don't even know if any of your players are even still around or, even with the other staffs, faculty uh, that might live in this Queens area, which obviously has been uh, shut down and really locked down for quite some time. Well, I'll tell you what, between the athletic department, uh, Mike Craig, who's leading the charge, I think he's kind of kept the coaches uh, intact with one another. We contact with one another with, with the Zoom and uh, just staying in touch with one another. All our players have gone home. I think that was the best thing to do. When we got done uh, playing that game at Madison Square Garden, the next day we were – we're fortunate to have an opportunity to send those guys home and be with their families. And of course, school is going on still. As I told them, school is not out now. And, but their health was the most important thing. Uh, uh, even as we speak today, their health is probably the most important thing right now. And then they chance, get a chance to go home and, and continue to finish up school. Uh, uh, but this community, uh, again, it has come together. I mean, I, I've never seen a, a city or a state that, that just comes together you know, when adversity comes, and we talk about it in coaching, uh, your true character really steps up to the forefront, and, uh, and we're seeing New York be strong. All right, so I want to go back to that day because you guys were literally the last game that was being played at Madison Square Garden. All the other conference tournaments had shut down, and you were able to play that half against Creighton. You were leading at the half. How surreal was that, that half of basketball and into that locker room when you found out that the game would not continue and the tournament was being canceled? Well, it was interesting even before the game, you know, uh, I think there was a question whether we were, whether we were going to play the basketball game. You know, we're playing without fans anyway. I think there was maybe 200 fans for each team. Uh, and then right before the game, you know, there was a delay because of all the other uh, conferences not playing their games. And, uh, but then we, proceeded and then right before the half, you know, you go in the, in the half and we're leading, playing against a great Creighton team. Um, but as I told our guys, you know, there's a game that's bigger than basketball and that's the game of life. And I think our health is, is more and more important. Uh, the fans that were there, the parents that were there. Uh, so it was, you can imagine the emotion, you know, but you got some seniors in there and, and, uh, and we were playing pretty good basketball going down that stretch. Uh, uh, but, you know, once they thought about it, I thought, I, th I think they, they said, you know what, this makes sense. And so, uh, uh, but to be in that setting and all of a sudden, boom, uh, it stops. Uh, I'm still kind of in my mind trying to make, did, did it really happen? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine. I, I was in Indianapolis at the Big Ten tournament getting ready for the Rutgers-Michigan game, which never started. But to walk out of Madison Square Garden just after a half, I mean, that had to be something that just, you know, pinching yourself like is this really happening as everything is shutting down um on the positive note uh your team was playing really well you know you ended the season uh second in the nation in steals per game third in assist to turnover ratio top 25 in tempo 
you had won three of your last four games, including beating Creighton, Marquette, Georgetown with a 23 to 0 run. Uh, and you were on your way to potentially winning another game against Creighton. What had gone so well for the St. John's team at the end of the season? Well, you know, when you come in, you got so many different parts, uh, new parts, uh, the players we brought in, the guys that were here, uh, getting to know them, they're they getting to know us, kind of the evaluation process. And not only that, setting the tone in the culture in terms of what you expect. And, uh, you know, in, in the non-conference schedule, uh, we had a pretty good record going into that. But you know going to that Big East, it's the best it's been, you know, uh, since it's kind of been reunited. And you got some great coaches, some great teams, and we, we got hit upside the head starting off. And, uh, but I thought we start collecting ourselves, and we were competitive. Uh, but there's a difference between being competitive and winning. And I thought right there going down the stretch, a lot of things start taking place. Uh, Greg Williams start playing well for us. Uh, Rasheem Dunn, a guy that transferred in, uh, he started playing well for us. Marcellus Erlington, the role guys. They all of a sudden they stepped up. We had a, a freshman, Julian Champagne. He ended up being on the all rookie team and, uh, and one of the better uh, freshmen uh, in, in, in this area. Uh, so we had some guys that start really start playing well and, and our team started playing well. And so what it does is it sets the stage for next year. Yeah, let's look ahead. Um, let's assume we have the season that we hope uh, yeah. and you know, pray that it'll happen on time. What could next season St. John's team look like? Well, uh, I like the, the core that we have. Uh, obviously, L.J. Figaro has his name in the draft, and uh, that, uh, that, that's another issue we're looking at. But I, I, We don't I, even know when the draft's going to be. Don't know when the draft's going to be, so there's a lot of little question marks out there. But, but I, I like the, the team that's coming back. We were a young basketball team. We were a very inexperienced team. Well, guess what? We got a chance to gain some some experience in, in last year in a, in a great, great Big East. I, I don't realize, I didn't realize, but, you know, we had two first-team All-Americans in that league. We had, like, four or five guys that were, like, right there scratching on, you know, the surface to be on one of those teams. So, uh, if you're looking at this coach to come in this league, inexperienced, when the, the league's at its best and you got some great, great coaches in there, man, I, I tell you what, I need to be knocking upside my head. But we were able to hang in there and, and that's why I say looking forward to next year, uh, the core that we have coming back, those guys will be better. And we talked about leveling up. Uh, and then I think the recruiting class we have coming in, uh, we have some dy dynamic kids that are coming in, two junior college, uh, all Americans, uh, two really, really good high school kids that I really love that, that are from this area. And then we had a grad transfer uh, coming in. Yeah, I mean, you've coached in some of the best and most competitive leagues in the country over the course of your career. Uh, and the Big East was, you know, was outstanding this past season, as we all know, with uh, top players and competitive balance from one to ten. All right, so you're in this lockdown situation. Your wife are hunkering down. Um, everyone's got a show or series that they've cycled through or onto the next one. What have you been watching? Well, you, 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 this is going to be funny. I've got so many clips of people sending me uh, uh, something about the the Ozarks. The Ozark, you know, and I lived in Missouri. I used to go down uh, to the Lake of the Ozarks, uh, probably ran into in, in, in all the characters that's on that show. And so I said, you know, let me watch it. And the, the clip that they sent me, I finally had a chance to put it in context with the show. Uh, I've been to watch Ozarks. I've, I've seen the, uh, what, Tiger King? I, I saw that one there. That was weird there, man. But, uh, <laughs> but very, very entertaining. And, uh, and I'm continuing to watch different shows uh, it's, and watching a lot of tape. You can imagine that uh, of this past year, but uh, it's, I'm running out of shows to tell you the truth. You got any suggestions? Uh, succession. If you haven't watched, you've got to watch succession. Uh, that certainly is one that uh, uh, I think is worth the binge watch as well. Yeah. And, and you know what? My wife is big and watching, uh, you know, Korean movies and, uh, but, you know, you got to read the subtitles. You got to read yeah. it all the time. And I, I don't want to read. I want to just listen and hear it. But, uh, uh, but again, it, you know what? In all seriousness, sometimes things happen. We don't know why. Uh, but it also gives you time to reflect. I think to reflect on the things that, you know, obviously we've been blessed, uh, uh, blessed in, in, in the life that we have. And so every day is a, is a blessing. And so uh, let's pray and hope that we can uh, – find a antidote for this virus, man, a vaccine that uh, we can knock it out and uh, 
and it will pass. Yes, this too shall pass. We'll be on the other side. Stay safe, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andy. For the best access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports, follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.